How's it going, everybody? Too spooky here. And welcome back to the week of 101s. And if you do not know what the week of 101s is, we recently hit 100,000 subscribers. And because of that, I'm going to be putting out a 101 facts video every single day for a whole week. Today is day number four, and today, we are going to be counting down 101 facts about RuneScape. This video was suggested by... Simply Grouch, shout out to him, Western G321, and Krieger. Thank you very much for the suggestion, guys. As most of you know, RuneScape is one of my favorite games. And I've made a handful of smaller RuneScape fact videos in the past. So now I guess it's time to just compile a bunch of the best facts I could find together into one big old video. So thank you guys very much for the suggestion once again, and this one is going out to you. Now, real quickly before we get into the facts, I just wanted to say that this video will be covering RuneScape as a whole. So RuneScape 3, RuneScape 2, Old School RuneScape, RuneScape Classic, anything that has to do with the world of RuneScape is subject to the contents of this video. Anyways guys, with that, get grinding and let's get started. Number 1. RuneScape was created by Andrew and Paul Gower, with some assistance from their brother Ian. Number 2. The first rendition of RuneScape was known as Devious Mud, which first came out in 1998. There were two versions of Devious Mud, however only around 20 to 30 people ever got to actually play it before Andrew and Paul Gower decided to shift their focus into turning the game into what we would later call RuneScape Classic. Number 3 RuneScape Classic was developed from 1999 until the end of the year 2000, and then the beta was released January 4th of 2001. Number 4 On March 29th of 2004, what would later be known as RuneScape 2 was released, and this was accomplished after players did tons of beta testing from December of 2003 until mid-March. Number 5 RuneScape 3 was released on July 22nd of 2013, which is considered by most to be either one of the best or worst updates in RuneScape history. And aside from that, back on November 20th of 2012, came the evolution of combat which completely reworked the combat system to a way which many players, including myself, weren't very happy about. But unfortunately, because of many other updates way before RuneScape 3 and the evolution of combat came along, such as taking away free trade and the wilderness, many players had already quit the game, so it was kinda hard to get them back. Number 6 However, on February 15th of 2013, a poll was made which gave players the opportunity to vote for a different server of the game which would be exactly what RuneScape was like back in August of 2007. If 50,000 votes were reached, the server would be released. But if more and more votes were given, the server would be giving updates, a dedicated small team, no extra membership fee, and a few other things as well. And when the poll was finished, it had accumulated 449,351 votes, which meant that the game was here to stay. And so, Old School RuneScape was born. Number 7 The main website and Old School RuneScape are still quite popular to this day, but they are not near as popular as they once were from 2004 to 2007. However, the number of players is currently at a steady increase, so maybe someday in the next few years RuneScape will be booming just like it used to. Although it's unlikely, only time will tell. Number 8 The world of RuneScape, or I guess the planet, is called Gilinor, and the kingdoms that inhabit it are Mistelin, Asgarnia, Kandarin, and Mauritania. And the name Gilinor was given to RuneScape by Guthix. Side note, I probably mispronounced a few of those, but... It's bound to happen. Number 9 Player moderators and JEGX moderators were first created and introduced to RuneScape on June 14th of 2004. Number 10 Currently, the old school JMods are Mod Archie, Mod Ash, Mod Ghost, Mod Ian Gower, Mod Jed, Mod John C, Mod Kieran, Mod Matt K, Mod Maz, Mod Ronan, Mod Rock, Mod Tom H, Mod Weath, and Mod West. Number 11. In RuneScape Classic, and even early in RuneScape 2, it was possible for female characters to have beards. This was of course removed from the game later on. Number 12. No matter what, when you log in, you will always be facing south. Number 13. 
Even if your public chat is turned off, you will still see player mod chats. Number 14. It is impossible to get killed by a chicken. Unless it's an evil chicken. Number 15. No matter how hard you try, it is impossible to telegrab the ruby ring in the Varrock West Bank basement. Number 16. In RuneScape Classic, only one person could talk to an NPC at a time. This included bankers as well, so it was really hard to get anything done if the server was busy. This is also the reason there are multiple quest NPCs in the game, so that players could complete quests faster if someone else was talking to that NPC. Number 17. Upstairs in Draenor Manor, there is a skeleton on the floor, and if you examine it, the text says, I don't understand, why didn't he go back to Lumby? Number 18. No matter which way you are facing, if you click the compass by your minimap, it will reposition your view of the screen north. Number 19. There are a total of 82 cabbages in the Lumbridge cabbage field. Number 20. Xanaris is actually Gilinor's moon. So yeah, that's a thing. Number 21. For a small period of time, the color of the numbers of the stats were orange instead of yellow. This was however quickly changed back after colorblind players complained about not being able to see the text. Number 22. Black demons are exactly two times the size of the player. Number 23. Without Ava's accumulator or a tractor, arrows have a 20% chance of disappearing. Number 24. RuneScape is full of pop culture references, and I can assure you there will be more and more as the list goes on. But the first one I want to talk about lies in the stronghold of security. Right when you enter, there is this chump skeleton laying on the ground, and if you look closely at his hat, it's actually the same hat that Link wears in the Legend of Zelda series. And if you examine him, the text says that he looks a bit past it. Which is a reference to the game, The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past. Number 25. When you first talk to Ceramic Varse about your quest, which is Black Knight's Fortress, he will tell you your mission, if you decide to accept it. And when he gives you the dossier, it will self-destruct after you read it. And these are both references to Mission Impossible. Number 26. In RuneScape Classic, smithing was quite a bit different. Mostly in regards to the level requirements. For instance, you needed 96 smithing to make a steel plate body. Number 27. Whenever you light a fire, your player will always light them towards the west. This is because the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. Number 28. Back in the days of RuneScape Classic, there were quite a few skills that never made the cut for RuneScape 2. Basically, the skills that never made it were influence and tailoring, and then magic and prayer were split into two different skills, which were good magic and evil magic, and pray good and pray bad. And as you can see, Herblore was called Herb Law. Number 29. I'm not sure if you guys ever noticed this, but when you wield a bow, you can't actually see the string. I honestly never noticed that before. Number 30. It is possible for edible holiday items like Easter eggs or pumpkins to be turned into rotten foods by ghasts. So watch out if you just happen to be carrying one of these, especially in RS3. Number 31. In the early days of RuneScape 2, plate body sprites had gloves attached to them, but when you put it on, you weren't wearing the gloves. And chain bodies actually had shoulders. Number 32. Did you know that there's something really dumb you can do with the Karamja rum? Which is what you buy for the pirate's treasure quest? Well, if you also have a banana in your inventory and you use it on the rum, you stick the banana in the top of it. Followed by the text, you stuff the banana into the neck of the bottle. You begin to wonder why. Well, I can safely say I'm beginning to wonder why the hell this is even a thing, Jagex, that's for sure. You can also do this with a sliced banana as well, but it's not near as dumb, that's for sure. Number 33! For a very short period of time, black medhelms used to have a purple band above the eyes instead of the red band that all the other medhelms have. However, this was later changed. Number 34. It was originally impossible to ever get level 2 herb lore. And technically it still is, but for a little while there was actually a unintentional glitch that allowed some players to achieve level 2 in the skill. This was because of the botanical pie. It gives the player a plus 4 level boost in herb lore, and when it was first released, 
It allowed players to make attack potions without doing the Druidic Ritual quest when you ate one. This has since been patched and you can no longer get level 2 or blower once again, but some players will always have the skill at level 2 because of this. Number 35. In RuneScape Classic, ranged attacks were originally just this green star that flew across the screen, and magic attacks were a blue star. However, because the animations for the two were so similar, the developers decided to give them each their own unique animations to differentiate the two. Number 36. Wearing ham clothing does in fact decrease your chances of getting caught while pickpocketing ham members. I always heard this was just a rumor back in the day, but it is in fact true, so I just figured I would clear that up. Number 37. If your run is turned off and you hold control while you click, your player will run. After all these years, I never knew that either. Holy shit. Number 38. There are actually only three men on Lunar Isle. That's right, only three. And they are the three bankers. This is also confirmed when you examine them. And the examined text will say, Glad to be only one of three men on the island. Well, not anymore, son. Plus, me makes four. Now, where are them girls at? Number 39. Both watermelons and pineapples have the option to eat them but you can't unless you slice them up first. So why this eat option is even there is beyond me. But I'm sure anyone who's ever had a watermelon or pineapple in-game has tried at least once. Well, if you're gonna eat a watermelon, just make sure to bring a towel to wipe your face and hands off afterwards so they don't get sticky. Um, thanks, Tully. Number 40! In RuneScape 3 during the Easter events, specifically in the Easter event area, if a player tries to hit another player with a snowball, they will receive a message that says, This is Easter, not Christmas. You don't see the Easter Bunny interfering in Christmas events now, do you? Number 41. Over the course of RuneScape's lifespan, there have been a handful of items in the Grand Exchange that you couldn't even purchase, and you couldn't purchase them because they didn't exist in-game other than in the Grand Exchange. One of these items was the Truffle, which was added to the Grand Exchange in early 2008. However, it was also removed from the Grand Exchange that same year in late September. When you examine the item, it says, Makes me want to do a Truffle Shuffle which is a reference to the Goonies movie. Number 42. Abyssal Whips are supposed to be the spine of the Abyssal Demon. Grody. Number 43. In RuneScape 3, training bows, swords, and shields are now discontinued items. See, when the new Tutorial Island was released, they were no longer available in the game. So they are actually quite a rare thing these days, especially because they are untradeable. Number 44. In RuneScape Classic, there was a carpentry skill that was taken out of the game early on. This skill would later become the construction skill in RuneScape 2, and the carpentry skill was of course not quite the same as construction, but it had the same general concept. Number 45. When Rune Armor was first being created, it was actually meant to be purple. Number 46. When skill capes were first introduced into the game, they were actually tradable, and on top of that, they were not called a member's object in a free-to-play world. Number 47. Before the release of the Stronghold of Security, there were no rocks in the middle of Barbarian Village, and the village itself looked quite different as well. But instead of the rocks, a scaffold was in the center of the village. Number 48. For the Black Knight's Fortress quest, you are rewarded with 2.5k. And now this may not seem like a lot of money, but back in the early days it was. And as a side note, this quest requires 12 quest points to start if you don't remember. Well, originally the quest point requirement didn't exist, but was added to stop players from creating new accounts to do the quest, and then transfer the 2.5k over to their main accounts. Number 49. The purple party hat is actually the rarest one to get out of a Christmas cracker. However, it's actually the cheapest because of a duplication glitch that happened back in RuneScape Classic. Because it was so rare, players who found out about the glitch made a ton more purple ones than any other color, making it the cheapest out of all the party hats. Number 50. Max cash is 2,147,483,655. coins. However, back in the RuneScape Classic days, max cash was actually 65,535 coins. Number 51. The Stronghold of Security's design and different levels are based on the four horsemen of the apocalypse. These four horsemen are called War, Famine, Pestilence, and Death, and each level of the Stronghold is based on and named after a different horseman. Number 52. 
If you throw a gold ring into the wilderness volcano, a goblin will run out and say, My precious, no! Well, this is actually a reference to the Lord of the Rings movies. Number 53. To be honest, I'm sure quite a few of you are going to know about this fact I'm about to talk about, but I'm curious on just how many of you were aware of it. Well, during the Knight's Sword quest, you can have Thurgo make multiple swords if you drop them one by one on the ground, and then pick them back up once you have however many you want. And when you go to turn the sword in to finish the quest, you simply drop the extra swords you want to keep while keeping one in your inventory to finish the quest. And once you finish the quest, you just walk back over and pick up the swords on the ground, and boom! You've got yourself a blue right sword. I was actually shown this trick back in 2005 by my friend who taught me about the game, so this has been around for quite a while, but I'm unsure on how common knowledge it actually is, so be sure to let me know. Number 54! Some of the Barrows brothers wear a Legends cape, which from this we can obviously assume that they were members of the Legends Guild way back in the day. Either that or they murdered some poor guy with one and decided to wear it themselves. Number 55! So Draenor Manor cabbages are actually significantly different than normal ones. Not only do they taste slightly better than normal ones according to the chat bar, but they also boost your defense by one or two points. Well on top of this, during the Black Knight's Fortress quest you are tasked with using a cabbage on the cauldron to sabotage the weapon. Well if you use a Draenor cabbage instead of a regular one, you would receive a message saying, this is the wrong sort of cabbage, and afterwards your character will say, I'm not supposed to be helping the witch, you know. Number 56. Back in the early days of RuneScape 2, the two-handed sword was held in one hand like a longsword, and then it was updated so the sword was held in one hand but rested on your shoulder. And then finally we have it like it is today where we actually wield it with two hands. Number 57. If you use a herring on a tree in RuneScape, it will say this is not the mightiest tree in the forest. And then if you use the herring on the grand tree, it says it can't be done. These are actually both references to the Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Number 58. It is possible to cut bananas with almost any sharp weapon instead of using a knife, as you can see here. Number 59. When team capes were first released, the pink team capes were colored white instead, but they were changed to pink because they looked too similar to the Legends cape. Number 60. In real life, it may be difficult to find a needle in a haystack, but in RuneScape, it's a little bit too easy. Number 61. That yellow and red X that appear whenever you click something with your cursor is the only graphic in the game that has been the exact same since RuneScape Classic. Number 62. When Sarah Doman first arrived in Gilinor, he actually first ended up on the island of Entrana. Number 63. The Cook's Assistant quest was the first quest that they ever began developing. Number 64. At one point, willow bows and adamant arrows were members only items. Number 65. The black pickaxe is actually weightless, while the rest of the pickaxes either weigh 1 or 2 kilograms. Number 66. The party room used to be located in Sears Village back in the day, but it ended up being replaced with the courthouse and moved to Faldor instead. Number 67. During the Grand Tree Quest, before you were about to fight the Black Demon, Glow used to say, say hello to my little friend, which is a reference to the Scarface movie. However, this dialogue has since been updated, and now he says, meet my little friend. Number 68. In RuneScape 3, axes are known as hatchets. This was changed because of players getting confused between axes, pickaxes, and battle axes, so they thought this would make it easier. In old school RuneScape, they are still known as axes. Number 69. During the Wanted quest, while you're scanning the third area, your character will say, Dead or alive, you're coming with me. Which is a reference to the Robocop movie. Number 70. The cleaner who walks around Varrock's East Bank does actually have a purpose. See, the outside of Varrock's East Bank used to be quite a popular place to train fire making back in the day, and it occasionally still is. So what the cleaner would do was go around and clean up the ashes on the ground. Number 71. The sheeps and pigs used to be the only unattackable animals in RuneScape until Hunter was released. Number 72. The Blast Furnace minigame was originally supposed to be the Smithing Guild. But instead, Blast Furnace was accidentally created out of it and they just kinda went with it. Number 73. If you examine one of the piglets in Draenor, you get the text, I shall call him Mini Pig. This is actually a reference to Mini-Me from the Austin Power movies. 
Number 74. Back before membership was released in RuneScape Classic, the Black Knight's Fortress Quest was called Spy Quest. Number 75. During the recipe for Disaster Quest, you guys know that area where you dive underwater to get all that crab meat? Well, obviously you need the diving apparatus and fishbowl helmet to go down there and all. But if you were to receive a random event while you're down there, they would also have a diving apparatus and fishbowl helmet. Number 76. The clock above the bank in Catherby, the clock tower, and East Ardone are all stopped at 10.04, which is a reference to the movie Back to the Future. Number 77. When RuneScape Classic first launched, there were only six quests available, which were Cook's Assistant, Demon Slayer, The Restless Ghost, Romeo and Juliet, Sheep Shearer, and The Shield of Arov. Number 78. In RuneScape 3, if you buy four candles from any candle seller, you will be given a fork handle instead. No, that's just an awful pun, guys. Come on. Number 79. The tree gardener in Varrock's Castle Courtyard is named Tresner, and this name is actually the combination and reference to Trent Reznor, who is the singer of the band Nine Inch Nails. Number 80. So during the Monkey Madness quest, you remember when you stole that poor monkey kid's Grigri? Well, if you give him a new one, he will say, Thank you, Uncle. I love you. How sweet. Number 81. During the first few days that the farming skill was released, Players could plant seeds and then quickly dig them up and then replant them again to gain quick farming experience at a low level. Jagex found out about this a few days later and then removed it from the game. Number 82. XXX Neo XXX7 became the first player to ever hit 200 million experience in a skill, which was Fletching, and he accomplished this on January 1st of 2006. Number 83. Falador used to be gray instead of white. And so did the White Knights for that matter. See, Faldor used to be made of grey stones like the usual stereotypical castle walls and buildings around. And with the grey walls, the White Knights were also grey. Because they wore steel armor instead of the white armor they wear now. Yet they were still called White Knights. Number 84. The NPCs who sell team capes are named William, Ian, Larry, Darren, Edward, Richard, Neil, Edmund, Simon, and Sam. And if you take the first letters of each of their names, it spells out Wilderness. Number 85. During the Garden of Tranquility quest, the wise old man quizzes you, and one of the questions involves PK Master 0036. Well, later on during the cutscene with the guards, they are killed by a player by the same name. Number 86. Suomi was the first player to achieve 200 million experience in all skills. At the time, however, there were only 25 skills available, and he achieved this on March 18th of 2013. Number 87. There are no items that start with the letter Q in the Grand Exchange. In old school RuneScape, at least. I'm not sure about RS3. Number 88. Back in RuneScape Classic, Magic had a chance of fizzling, which when this happened, you kept all of your runes, but you couldn't cast another spell for 20 seconds. Number 89. It is possible for some players to have level 9 HP instead of 10. The reason for this is because back in RuneScape Classic, the experience to bring HP to 10 was only 1000 XP. But when the game transitioned to RuneScape 2, the XP for level 10 was raised to 1154. So players who made accounts back in RuneScape Classic had their stats carry over, making it so their accounts are forever stuck with 9 HP unless they decide to train it. Number 90. There are still some accounts out there who are only level 1. To have a level 1 account, your account had to be banned back in RuneScape Classic, and then have that account be unbanned sometime afterwards. And because of this, it also means that it is possible to have a hit point or constitution level be lower than even level 9. Number 91. When the Abyssal Whip first came out, the special attack would have a 50% chance that you would hit your maximum hit. And if you didn't hit your max hit, you would hit a zero instead. This was soon considered way too overpowered, so the special attack was updated and changed to the ability to drain run energy. Number 92. There are some furnaces in RuneScape that actually have this little mini furnace on it as well. And it's functional too, so you can smelt ores in this little mini furnace which makes it so it appears as if you're smelting ore on the far left in midair. However, this was eventually taken out of the game, but the little mini furnaces are still there, you just can't smelt them. Number 93! 
At one point, it was possible to enter the wise old man's cutscene where he breaks into Draenor Bank and steals the party hat. And you can also steal this party hat when you do. This was possible through a personal area forced teleport, which is basically manipulating the game, but I of course couldn't tell you how because I don't understand it. But when you do get the party hat, you can't wear it, because if you try to, it will disappear, and you will receive this message. Please send a bug report to Jagex telling them how you got that hat. Number 94! Nay, tis not, and ja tizo are both nothing but puns. See, if you say it like nay, tis not, and ya, tizo, it's supposed to sound like no, it is not, and yeah, it is so. Number 95. Another instance of word puns is mostly harmless, which is supposed to be said mostly harmless. Number 96. Hunter was the first skill a player reached 200 mil experience in during the first year of its release. The player Mumi Dragon achieved this in approximately 219 days after its release on the 21st of November 2006. Number 97. Summoning was accidentally leaked months before its release, but nobody made a big deal about it because everyone thought it was fake. Number 98. There is actually a goblin underneath the wise old man's bed. Number 99. There was a famous but short-lived glitch involving Castle Wars when it first came out. See, in Castle Wars, you can take these bandages to heal yourself. Well, by leaving the minigame, players could take these bandages with them. And then these players would go to the dual arena with these bandages and scam people. Because during the dual arena interface when you clicked no food, bandages did not count as food. So these players were able to smuggle the bandages in and then scam tons of people I imagine. However, this bug was soon fixed after it was discovered and all bandages were removed from players' banks and inventories just in case they still had any on them. Number 100. Ignatus Vulcan, who is the NPC that you buy the fire skill cape from, is actually the only skill cape wearing NPC to have a trimmed skill cape. I wonder what his second 99 is. And the moment you've all been waiting for... Number 101. During the song Norse Code, there is a flute solo. And the awesome thing about this flute solo is that it spells out the word runescape in Morse code. Hence why it is called Norse Code. But there you have it everybody, 101 facts about RuneScape. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video today and hopefully you learned something. If you did, make sure to leave a like. But that is not all. If you leave a like on this video, there is a 0.0007% chance that you will receive max cash. That is correct. If you are one of the lucky few, the next time you log on to RuneScape or old school RuneScape, you will have maximum cash. The chances are slim, so don't expect it, but you could get lucky, so make sure to leave a like. Also, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. We've got plenty more RuneScape-related content on the way. Although it will probably be few and far between, it's not going anywhere. Also, real quickly, I just wanted to give an enormous shout-out to OSRS Beats. He makes some absolutely amazing remixes of the RuneScape songs, and he allowed me to use them in this video. So if you enjoyed any of the music in this video whatsoever, you should definitely go check him out. A link to his channel will be in the description. And since this video is RuneScape related, I also wanted to give a couple shoutouts to some RuneScape related channels that I've been watching lately. The first one is Evil Ride Kessie, probably mispronounced that. Then we have Slothic, Dead Sir, Mika279, and Zorb49. These guys all make some fantastic RuneScape related content and you should definitely go check each of them out as well. Links to their channels will also be in the description. Also make sure to like and follow Too Spooky on his social media and Twitch. Links are in the description. And feel free to send him something. His P.O. Box address is also down there. I, I think. Is it down there? Yes, Tali. It is in the description as well. Okay, cool. Yeah, so... Yeah, cool. I just wanted to say, Tali, I'm very proud of the fact that you actually showed up on time today. And you don't appear to be high either. Yeah, after our conversation on the phone yesterday, I realized that I really need to turn my life around. I just got a fantastic job opportunity here at Too Spooky, and I don't want to ruin that. Well, Tali, you did a great job today, so as long as you keep that up, we won't have any problems whatsoever. Awesome, cool, thanks, man. Hell, if you keep up the great work like you did today, I'm sure even Bane and Carl will like you. Speaking of, I wonder if Bane found Carl yet. What the fuck is this shit? That guy said Southwest, right? 
Well, it hasn't even been three miles and I'm at the fucking Great Wall again. Oh, that son of a bitch pulled a fast one on me, didn't he? Oh, that fucking piece of shit, I'm gonna show him. Oh, okay, okay, so you want the fried rice? No, I said I want the Chinese chicken, dude, what the fuck? <laughs> Holy fuck, okay, okay, I'll take the fucking fried rice, dude, just don't shoot. <laughs> oh, you shouldn't have come back here, sonny boy, no, no, no. You should have known I'd be waiting for you. Enough of the games, old man. Nobody pulls one over on Bane and gets away with it. I'll have you know I took down the Batman and took over Gotham City. What have you done besides convince people to get the goddamn fried rice? Wait, wait a second. Did you just say Bane? Yes, and I can tell you right now that Bane is going to teach you some manners. Good luck cooking your damn fried rice with a broken back. Hey, Mang Chow! Tell the boys in the back we've got a rogue dog. Nya nya? Why nya nya? Nya nya? Nya nya? Nya nya? Nya nya? Nya You shouldn't even bother calling the police if that's what you're doing. You'll be broken and I'll be gone before they even arrive. Oh, oh no, sonny boy, I no call police. I call your execution squad, Bane. What the hell are you talking about? Hoi! Oh, son of a bitch, I don't have time for this shit. will be you in about 30 seconds, old man! <laughs> that takes care of those guys. Die, motherfucker! <laughs> hurt quite a bit. You think a little shotgun blast is gonna be enough to save you? <laughs> Stop right there. Take another step and lose your goddamn foot. Now then! You're going to tell me how to get to Mount Tai, or I am going to kill you. Uh, me no speak the English well, but I, I tell you, no kill, no kill. Spit it out then. Uh, Mount Tai is 20 mile northeast. Tallest one. Now was that so damn hard? Oh, by the way, you better take that old man to the hospital or he is going to die. Wait, you're, you're kidding, right? I won't listen to lies, Carl. Either you're lying to me or you're extremely delusional, which is way beyond what I can help you with. But, but Vegapunk, I swear that all actually happened. I came all this way because you said you could help me. Let me think about this for a minute, Carl. So he's more than likely lying. But if he's not, this could also be the case of the century. There is something very odd about this boy. And there's still a huge chunk of time that is unaccounted for that he can't seem to recall. I guess I could at least hook him up to the DM and LM machines. They could shed some light on this situation. Alright, I'll tell you what, Carl. I'm very skeptical about your story. But if somehow you are telling the truth, I will help you. And I'll even do it for free. Wow, really? Thank you so much! But, um, how do I prove it to you? Well, you see, you'll just have to let me access your DMs. Uh, why do you want to look at my Twitter messages? No, silly, not your direct messages, your dead memories. Uh, I don't get it. Have you ever heard the Slipknot song, Dead Memories? No. Well, that shit is cash. Anyways, I named my machine after it. 
but basically I have a machine that can access memories that you can't remember, and display them on a screen for me to observe. I also have an LM or living memory function on that same machine, and it can show me the memories you can see clearly right now. This way I can see if you're truly lying. Okay cool, you're gonna be really bamboozled when you see I'm telling the truth. Yeah, we'll see. Down this hall, please. Alright, now just go through that door over there, and then have a seat, and we'll begin. Okay. Alright, Carl, you're going to feel a very painful pinch in about three seconds. Oh god, okay. Alright, Carl, now just try and relax while I sift through your recent memories. Oh wow, okay. So his first dead memory looks to have died 13 days ago. Then on the fourth day after the first, he has three whole days just missing from his memory. Huh, that's, that's so weird. I can't access anything about them either. That's never happened before. Mm, that's gonna be one hell of a problem. Well, I guess I should flip through the living ones. Okay, he's in the cave like he said. There's George Bush. Huh, he wasn't kidding. Wait, holy shit, that is Frankie. What is he doing there? Oh my god, an explosion! Then he wakes up on the boat. Okay, but where's the sea monster? Uh, Vegapunk, it happened on my fourth day out on the ocean. Oh, okay, let me flip ahead here. Oh my god, Kaido is still alive? This is problematic, problematic indeed. But I can't worry about that one right now, it's out of my control. Okay, Carl, it looks like you were indeed telling the truth. I'm sorry for accusing you of lying. It was very unprofessional of me. It's okay, Vegapunk. I guess it is a pretty crazy story after all. Well, I will stay true to my word and help you get all of your memories back. From what I saw, there are currently four days in total that are just completely erased from history according to your mind. And my machine wouldn't let me access them either, which has never happened before. So, uh, what does that mean? It means that I have no idea how long this procedure could be. I can't bring your memories back unless I can access them first. So I'm going to have to do some tests on your brain. But you've had a long trip it seems. You should really get some rest and we can begin tomorrow. Okay Vegapunk, you're probably right. Thanks again for all the trouble. No problem Carl. This will more than likely turn out very beneficial for the future of science and memory loss. So I'm happy to help you in any way that I can. And I will not stop trying until your memories are back. So just head upstairs, and there's a guest room in the back left. Thanks, Vegapunk. I'll uh, see you in the morning. Good night, Carl. This really could turn out to be the case of the century. I better begin my notes. Hopefully everything's going well on their end. Anyways, guys, if you cannot get enough too spooky content, well, why don't you click here? for five facts about the guards from RuneScape. And if that's not doing it for you, well why don't you click here for 101 facts about Slipknot, which was actually the previous video in the week of 101s. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching this video today, and make sure to go check out all of the YouTubers I shouted out in this video, their links will be in the description. Each one of them makes some amazing RuneScape content, and I would really appreciate it if you went to check them out. Anyways guys, thanks again for watching, and I will see you tomorrow with a new video.